Hello students, it's your history teacher. I hope that you're all relaxed and healthy after the holidays. And I'm here with our today's online lecture about medieval England. It will be about a lot of things that I've already mentioned when I was speaking about uh, medieval France, Hundred Years War, or for example, the Vikings. But for the medieval England, we have to go back to the first half of the 10th century and to speak a little about the origin of the modern British people. For their origin, we would have to go back to the Denmark, modern day Denmark, northern France and northern Germany. So they came from this area and these were the Germanic tribes. So we know that, for example, uh, the Germans were of the German origin, of course, but also the Franks, so people who uh, formed today's France and so on. So basically all of the Western Europe were the tribes of the German origin. And especially the Germanic tribes that, that formed medieval England afterwards were the Angles, Saxons and the Utes. So these were the three tribes. Okay, so they were of the same origin, of the Germanic origin, but they there were little differences. You can see maybe from the by the first look, you can see that one of the tribe gave the name to the country. So the Angles, the England was named after them because these especially inhabited the area of England and there were most of these people of this tribe. So Angles, but also Saxons and Utes. When they came to British Isles, they settled seven kingdoms, and these were Kent, Wessex, Sussex, Essex, Eastern England, Mercia, and Northumbria. So these seven. Please remember all of them. Okay, I can put it into the test. So which of these was not one of the original seven kingdoms okay so please remember all of these seven also remember all of the three tribes anglo saxons and Utes that came from mainland europe okay now we will move on so they created these kingdoms everything was quite peaceful but in the end of the 8th century the danes invaded the island and they ruled northern territories until they were defeated by Alfred the Great. You already know this because the Danes are basically the Vikings. So these are the Vikings originally from the Denmark. So these people were defeated by Alfred the Great. We all just mentioned that, but it's important for the chronology. Then we had the Norman conquest that we mentioned as well with the Battle of Hastings in 1066, where the King Harold was killed by the Willem the Conqueror, who became the next king. We know I mentioned that this Battle of Hastings was very, very important because Willem the Conqueror was a Norman. So he was from the northern France, the territory that was established by the Vikings in France, and he brought a lot of French culture to the throne and also he brought a lot of territorial disputes because when he came from France we know that all that happened during Hundred Years War was because there were some territorial disputes between England and France so they didn't know who has the claim for the territories in France and in England this brought also a lot of conflicts and like when you see it in the bigger picture from the long-term consequences, okay? So the Battle of Hastings was also pictured in the famous tapestry, the Bayou tapestry. You can see the picture on the left of the presentation, okay? So I also mentioned this to you. So the Herald was killed by thrown lens to his eye. This is how he was killed. We're not sure if he was killed straight by the Willem the Conqueror, but it is sad that yes. So this year, 1066, is very important. I will want you to remember that year. 
of the Battle of Hastings, because this brought a lot of changes. For example, medieval England adopted the feudal system. So, you already know what this is. There's feudal who owns the land and he gives it to people who are on the lower place of the pyramid and these people have to give him, for example, service or money or some other things in exchange for the land. So this is feudal system, very typical for all of the medieval countries of the medieval kingdoms in Europe. So he introduced this because something like that was already in France, so in the like former Frankish Empire, and he brought it to England with him. So he as a king gave the land to Norman nobles, he divided the territory of England and established sheriffs. These were the government officials because it is very useful for the administration of the country when there is not just one man controlling the territory from one center, but it's very useful to have a lot of uh, other officials to control a little areas for you. And very important thing he made was the Domesday Book. And this was the first statistic work. So it was a book about, for example, taxes and the other things people had to pay. Domesday Book was very important for keeping the record. You know, you had some proof that somebody took your money, so you pay the taxes and you should be good with the officials. Of course, most of the people were illiterate during this period, but it was still great that somewhere was that record and they signed that they paid the taxes and so on. And even more, why this book is important is for nowadays, for us. Because we have the record how many did these people pay, what amount of crops they had to pay or money, because we know that the rent was very different during that period, so people didn't have to pay just in money, in cash, in currency, but they also could pay by their goods, they had could pay by their work, and everything was written in this book. So for us, it's a very important source of information about Middle Ages in England. Okay, so you have to remember the reforms, we can say, of William the Conqueror, what he did after he became a king. And this was introducing feudal system with his Norman nobles that he brought with him to the England. He established sheriffs who were the government officials who controlled some specific territory in the kingdom. And he also created Domsdy Book. Well, he got it created because, of course, he didn't write it himself. So these were the changes. The other thing that is connected to the court, so the king as his, and his nobles, were that all these people were French-speaking because they were from Normandy. And French basically became like a royal language and who was speaking French during that period was considered to be cultural, artistic, like high in the hierarchy, so he was important. And people who are speaking English were considered to be poor because they were pe mostly peasants and craftsmen and like lower class, okay? So this is... Uh, we can say also important so just please you can write it down somewhere next to it so like french speaking people were rich and higher like upper class and english speaking people were peasants and like lower class okay after william the conqueror the heir of the throne was his son henry the first who established curia regis curia regis was basically the first type of like a little parliament okay like a council because this curia regis consisted of the nobles that advised the king on legislative matters so he was not alone for everything he had these officials these people who were maybe specialists in exact fields so something like ministers today
okay but they were not elected of course they were just chosen by by the king so this was its name Curia Regis Curia bola napríklad aj na Slovensku, teda aj v Uhorskom kráľovstve a hlavne to označuje nejakú radu. Pamätajte si to tak, čiže rada alebo parlament regi znamená kráľovská, či kráľovská kúria, kráľovská rada, kráľovský parlament. Hej, tak by sme to povedali. After Henry the first, that was Henry the second, Henry was very popular name among the English kings. So Henry the second was the next king and he married former wife of the French king who died. So he, she was a widow. Her name was Eleanor of Aquitaine, but that is not important. The important about this is that she was French. So this was another thing, how they slowly began to have these conflicts. Can you see it? So, you know, these heirs of the throne usually had claims. For example, the French kings had claims for the English throne because of these relationships between them. So just that is important. And besides having the French wife, he founded the Plantagenet dynasty, so the new dynasty, and the first one that we will mention, and this one was called Plantagenet. This had a huge domination also in France, because with his wife he inherited some territories in France, so this Plantagenet dynasty had lot of territories in the British Isles and also in France. So this was very important dynasty, Plantagenet, settled by Henry II. Remember that. Henry II had more sons, two of them that we will mention, and this was Richard the Lionheart, that is very famous, mostly but, you know, because of the legends, and because of that he was part of the king's crusade. I mentioned that it was the third crusade that happened and uh, Richard the Lionheart was one of the three kings that participated in this expedition. He was a knight crusader, he was beloved by the tradition, so in the like English folklore, also during his lifetime and after his death. So he was really famous, but he was not actual king. Like yes, he was heir of the throne, but he was always somewhere. He was a knight, so he was away from his home fighting in Jerusalem or he was fighting somewhere in Europe and not actually ruling. So the actual ruler was his brother, John, who became king later when Richard was killed during the siege, so again in the battle. Uh, and John was finally official king. He always desired for this title, but he was not really good ruler. He didn't have these powers for good leadership. In fact, he lost the territories in France and for that he got the name Lekland. Po slovensky, ak by vás to zaujímalo, je to bezzemok. Možno už ste to aj počuli, hej? Lekland alebo bezzemok. Väčšinou tým kráľom, ako ste si už všimli, sa dávali rôzne tie prídavné mená podľa niečoho, čo ich robilo výnimočnými. Keď nám už si aj pozrieme, že Richard levie srdce, Levý srdce hovorí o tom, že bol veľmi statočný. Alebo chrabrý a teda dodržiava to rytierské správanie, o tom svedčí tá prezilka Levý srdce. Potom napríklad William dobyvateľ, čiže ten, ktorý prišiel, dobil a zjednotil to územie. Alebo potom, keď už sme teda pri tých iných ríšach hovorili, sme si máme Nemec, Lysý bol pekný, krátky a proste rôzne podľa podľa ich buď fyzického vzhľadu, alebo podľa nejakých ich, podľa charakteru, podľa kvalit ich osobností. So, John got the name Lackland because he lost the territories that his father, for example, got by the marriage with the French queen and for also by the ancestors before, so he lost all the territories. So he was 
the weak king he was not really good ruler when the king is weak the first people who are trying to take an advantage out of this are the nobles so they forced john de lackland to issue magna carta in 1215 magna carta was a document that stated the political and legal rights of the english people so in fact it sounds like a good thing and actually was but not for the king himself you know because magna carta was stating this rights and people were becoming more powerful so people and nobles mostly by this fact king is becoming weaker it's always like that for example nowadays royal family of england is just representative they have no actual power they have less powers than the presidents for example like the presidents of uh, other european countries so that's it it can't go together to have strong king and strong nobles and rights of the people okay because more rights to the people means more liberation more something what we might call democracy and it has nothing to do with middle ages and with these kingdoms so magna carta very important document you do not need to remember the year so just john de lackland who issued the magna carta that stated rights of the english people and also this made him weak king but he was weak also before that's why he had to issue this document also during his period kyria ragus started to control the king who was already weak and changed into the great council so it got more power and it was renamed so as i mentioned you it was like the devising body so they were chosen to decide for some specific fields but during the period of henry the first these were just advisors so henry had the final word and he could say no i don't want to do this but in fact the great council already had some powers and could decide for the king in some cases because there was vote and the great council had a lot of more powers than curia regis and they started to control the king and the 13th century was a period when the king really did not have so much powers so you can see it really depends on the personality of the king so we had one king who was the conqueror then we had the king who was trying to establish some body for advising so he wanted to be we can see more professional then we had someone who wanted to get more territory so he married the french queen then we had the knight richard de Lanhart, and the last one was just person who really wanted to be a king also during the period when his brother was not able to manage all of his uh, duties to rule but in fact he was he didn't have this ability in himself he didn't have that character and that's why he became to be known as john de lackland uh, only after this period hundred years war came so you already know about this but after the hundred years war there will be another conflict just among the medieval england so medieval england will be the only country where this conflict will take place and it will be war of the roses on our next online lecture so thank you for staying with me and this online lectures and if you will have any further questions you can contact me anytime the test is slowly approaching us so please really do not hesitate and contact me if you need to ask about some topic that's it for me and i wish you to stay healthy during this period bye